Hi, Joel Torres from Contralona. Um, mm -hmm. Congratulations. Uh, what a great retirement tonight. Um, this question I asked Tony last uh, Thursday on the media call. Now that you've retired in ring action, what are your plans? Obviously going home, taking your break with your family, but are you wanting to be involved in AEW at some other capacity? <laughs> Thank you. Well, Tony has mentioned me staying on board in, in some form or fashion. We haven't really worked anything out there yet, but I'm sure we'll we'll have some kind of conversation. And I'm I am saying, ah, you know, maybe we'll see what happens. Um, I have no interest in you know being a manager or anything like that, or an agent. I don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. So I, I don't. I'm not sure what what I could offer. But, well, you're you know. one of the greatest legends, not only, certainly the greatest legend ever in AEW, and I think one, one of the greatest wrestlers, if not the greatest wrestler of all time, nobody's ever had a career that has spanned more than yours, and what you've done for us here, we're all in your debt, so please, not only is the door always welcome and open for you, but I hope you will be back, and like I've said, we'll figure it out, we want you here. Well, yep, I'm willing to have a talk. <laughs> Gord Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Um, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the early part of your career. Um, there was almost like a little bit of a crossroads with your career. You started obviously with Jim Helwig, the Ultimate Warrior, um, and you kind of separated a little bit. He went his way, you kind of went your way with Eddie Gilbert, Rick Steiner, you know, the first family. And I kind of just want to just talk about that part of your career and kind of at least kind of reflect a little bit on you know, now with with hindsight, um, was obviously, you know, it was the right thing to split up and do different stuff. And basically just kind of just reflect on the on, on that portion of your career. Well, I think it was definitely good that we were both together to begin with uh, because, you know, he just, he looked like a, a, a freak, you know. I was 265 pounds and I looked like a little kid compared to him. But both of us together were, were pretty intimidating uh, and, you know, we had a lot of people saying, you know, Maybelline Road Warriors, I don't know if you remember any of that, but, yeah. But we thought, who cares, you know, let's, we get a match with the Road Warriors, we hit the big time. And so... Uh, but, you know, I think it was good that we ended up splitting up. It was good that he went his way and I went mine. We were not meant to be together. We were meant to start together, and it, and it got us in the, in the door for sure. But uh, he, he needed to be on his own, and I needed to be. We were going to kill each other, literally, on the road. Two roided out young, young men. <laughs> Denise Salcedo, Instinct Culture. Well, that, I'm, I'm, that's what it was then. Two roided out guys. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> just just shooting straight here. <laughs> yeah. That so, stopped in, in 1990 for me, so, yeah. It didn't stop for him, but it stopped for me. Denise Salcedo, Instinct Culture. So my question to you is, when you were backstage about to come out and make your entrance, and when you came out and you saw your sons, I want to get your reactions as to what was going on in your mind and how you felt during that specific moment. Well, I knew what I wanted it to be, and it came out to be pretty much what I had hoped that it would be. I just, I just wanted to, you know, and it was perfect, too, because we had the video that played before that, and you saw all the old, you know, Surfer Sting stuff and with Rick, Ric Flair and the whole deal. It was great. And then when, when Garrett came out, my oldest son, as Surfer Sting, the reaction from the crowd, it was just what I had hoped that it would be. And uh, so it was great. I wanted people to go, is this, is this real? I mean... I wanted them to feel like they were going back in time, you know, and and they did with the video, and then they did with Garrett, and I think they did with Steven too, as uh, Wolfpack. So it was just a, a phenomenal deal. I'm I'm glad that we did what we did. It, the the whole the whole angle just was it, it came together beautifully. Hello, Sting, Steve Fall from, hey, Steve, Steve, two Steves here. Great name. Uh, great name, very handsome name. Um, question for you, was it so hard for you to leave that ring because you were out there after the pay-per-view, Darby's giving you cues, telling you, hey, we're going to wrap. Obviously, you kept going, and that was great for the crowd and the audience, but how hard was it? Because if that's really your last time, yeah. then I imagine you didn't want to leave those ropes and eventually 
yeah. Go backstage. Yeah, no, it's 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 tough. I've I've done it a few times, saying goodbye to some of these towns that I was gonna never come back to again, and this one being the last of the last. Um, wow, and the history here in this town to boot. Ric Flair being there. Wow, add Steamboat. I mean, again, the whole package. My sons, Darby, just. I mean, outstanding. It, it, it couldn't have been better. And it was hard to leave. Uh, you, you can tell that the fans don't want you to leave. And I don't really want to leave either. But I've never been really good with a microphone. so That's why we said just stay. You did it's great. great. Just yeah. stay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. It, it, it felt so good. When did you decide that this show would be your final show? Oh, well... Tony and I, we had a few conversations. We were kicking some ideas around, and he was saying, could you, could you maybe stay till Wembley? <laughs> 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 oh, man, Tony, I want to. I want to so bad, but I just, I, I, I could just, I was feeling it's, it's just, it's time. It's just time. And For it was, lot, Revolution yeah. was the three-year anniversary. Too. That was the three-year anniversary. I was going to get there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that's true. I mean, it, that's where it started. And so it's like so many things in all the years go full circle for me and you know the whole revolution thing it was full circle so great idea for tony well if I, I tried to get it another six months out of it, but it was, i tried my best so i tried everyone <laughs> thank you very much thank you for making this the greatest three years of my life and certainly i said before you walked in i think it's the greatest comeback ever in any sport ever and it's been the greatest send-off ever and the greatest last run ever and it wouldn't have been possible without, obviously, all the great fans. It wouldn't have been possible without Darby. But most of all, certainly 100% would not have been possible without you, Sting. Thank you. Wow. This was all his baby. And it's amazing that we, at the end of the night, can be like, we did it. And not have any regrets. Wake up, oh, man, we, we shit the bed last night. <laughs> we really, like, there's no regrets. Like, this was amazing. So thank you, Sting. First time I saw you was 1986, one half of the Blade Runners at a Mid-South house show in Longview, Texas. I followed your career every step of the way. I got to meet you in 2018 and your lovely wife, and you gave me an interview, and we're 100% class. I don't have a question for every moment Every stinger splash, every scorpion death lock, every scorpion death drop, all I can say is thank you, Sting. Jeez. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. That means a lot. These kind of things don't bounce off of me. I'm, I'm taking it all in. Thank you.